Good day everyone and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video, uh, part two of my VFO experiments uh, videos. <laughs> and um, yesterday, in yesterday's video, I built my first VFO and I've been testing it. Um, after a fail or two or three, <laughs> I managed to get it to work. And uh, I will explain you in just a little bit about uh, what was wrong in the uh, first circuits that I tried and why those didn't oscillate uh, but anyway the idea is very simple um, I wanted to build this VFO first of all because I never built a VFO before and I really wanted to learn how to do it and uh, the second thing is that um, I wanted to test a theory that someone long, long, long time ago I think it was like one year ago uh, maybe more uh, when I posted my first Pititico video, the, one of the older ones that I deleted after I posted the new ones. And uh, there was a comment uh, from someone saying that they don't have a crystal for the 40 meters band. And somebody posted a comment that they can replace the crystal with a VFO. So uh, I always had that thing in my mind, like is it possible, can we do it or not? So. That's exactly what I did, except that I didn't use the PTTCO. I've been testing it with the Michigan Mighty Might and uh, the 700 milliwatts minimalist transmitter. And guess what was the result? If you want to build beautiful homebrew projects, choose PCB Way. With excellent PCB prototyping services, all you have to do is to open your account on PCB Way, use the software of your choice to design your PCB board, upload the Gerber files, and place your order. Soon you will receive your professional and great quality PCB boards for your projects. PCB Way also offers PCB assembly services, SMD stencils, CNC, 3D printing, and even more. PCB Way is the way. Okay, so um, I came to the computer really quick just to show you what I did wrong in the first circuits and why it didn't oscillate, because I figured things out uh, after I built the one that worked. And I did a little bit more reading and I wanted to make sure that I'm also going to explain what I did wrong uh, so you don't have to do the same mistakes like me. So it's not that the schematic is wrong, uh, it's, it didn't work for me because there were things I didn't know about. And um, because uh, this circuit was designed for a different frequency, um, I think it was for the I'm not sure, but I think it was for the 80 meters band, if I'm remembering. So anyway, um, the thing is that uh, obviously you would think about uh, changing the variable capacitor or maybe you keep this one at 30, 40 picofarads. But then definitely uh, I will have to change the inductance of L1 and uh, also the parallel capacitor C2, which is a, a trimmer capacitor. But I also used... Um, um, a parallel capacitor like a band spread capacitor also so anyway I changed the value of this I m calculated the whole thing to work for the 40 meters band and of course it didn't work but then I also learned and we're going to go to the schematic that I built that it's not just uh, the inductor and the band spread capacitor and the calibration which is the the trimmer capacitor and the tune capacitor that you have to adjust for the new frequency that you're building the vfo for this one is also important and is band specific and these two capacitors over here they are also band specific and also even the coupling capacitor between these two stages is also band specific so in my case because i had different values obviously it didn't work and um, apparently for this capacitor over here, uh, the one that's coupling the LC tank to the oscillator, the smallest the value, the better. Um, unfortunately, I tried smaller values like 82 picofarads, 68 picofarads and so on, and it didn't work so well for me. So 100 picofarads uh, was good. Uh, the oscillator worked well. Um, in here, there was, I think, recommended a value of uh, 50 picofarads, but that didn't work so well for me either. So I ended up going back to 100 picofarads. 
and again the oscillator works well and in here also it's good to have a smaller value because it creates a better isolation between two stages and uh, I think I'm using 47 picofarads right now something like that and it seems to work fine but uh, I did test with 47 and 100 and oh, honestly I don't see such a big difference probably if I would see the, the sine wave on the screen uh, I would change my mind <laughs> but anyway I ended up uh, respecting the original schematic and I went back to 100 picofarads just to make sure that I'm building the whole thing the way it is uh, so I don't have different results um, since I cannot do so many so much measurements and anyway I ended up building the final stage as well which is a buffer amplifier with the 2 n 222 a uh, just a couple of resistors and capacitors and there's a filter on the output as well and apparently the output um, I believe it was something about uh, 500 ohms impedance something like that so uh, this is where the problems um, arrive for me <laughs> and we're going to talk about this in a little bit but anyway I just wanted to talk, talk about this uh, to make sure that I clarify a couple of things in case you want to build schematics like this one which is totally fine but for that frequency that it was designed for not for um, for the 40 meters band the way i want it so yeah you might have to change a couple of things in order to get the oscillator to work the way you want it to so anyway let's go back on the desk and i'm going to explain a couple of uh, more things over there and uh, let's see if it works to use it with the transmitter or not Okay, what's your guess? Did it work or it didn't? Probably if you're one of the experienced ones, uh, especially if you're a little bit elderly uh, and you built a bunch of VFOs before and circuits and simple circuits, transmitters and transceivers, probably you already guessed that no, it didn't. Um, well, at least not in my case, probably it might work. I know for sure that it does work with the uh, tube transmitters, but uh, there are some modifications to do and there's one capacitor to be added in tube transmitters in order to get the transmitter to work with the VFO but I honestly don't know much about uh, trans simple transmitters like this one like the 700 milliwatts minimalist transmitter you can you can take a look on the screen uh, for the schematic to see exactly what I have in here and if you want you can go have a look at yesterday's video about the VFO and have a look at the schematic over there probably you'll figure out uh, what's wrong now I'm not an engineer my my knowledge is very limited that's why I'm called amateur radio operator <laughs> I'm not uh, an engineer but I'm guessing maybe there's some impedance mismatching I don't know maybe this stage I know that it has somewhere about um, 500 ohms on the output I have no idea what uh, impedance might be here where the crystal gets connected I don't know or maybe I don't have enough uh, uh, signal on the output I know there's somewhere about uh, 4 volts peak to peak uh, I didn't measure this actually by the way uh, this is what was written in the article so if I built everything correctly then that's what it is if I didn't then maybe that's why it doesn't work or who knows maybe I have to change the circuits uh, of the transmitter in order to work with the VFO and this is the part where I do need your help <laughs> so if you have the knowledge if you've done this before and uh, you, if you could help me out I would really appreciate this maybe you can send me an email uh, with some information just because I don't have the time to read but I tried uh, this on the PTTCO I tried it with the Michigan Mighty Might and also with the uh, with this 700 milliwatts um, transmitter CW transmitter so anyway I'm going to do a demo uh, just in case so you see exactly what's going on all right so what I have here is the VFO the output of the VFO gets connected in the place of the crystal where the crystal used to be or um, in the transmitter uh, I have power here 12 volts battery is almost full um, powering the transmitter and here I have a key that 
uh, it doesn't fit in the screen and I have my watt meter over here and when I click on the on the key nothing if I put the transmitter very close to the receiver uh, you won't be able to hear it right now that's why I left the volume down just because uh, it's uh, I'm having a lot of noise in the receiver because of the LED lights but uh, I actually get to hear the transmitter into the into the receiver but there's no power coming out so as I was saying I also tested this one with the Michigan Mighty Might unfortunately no luck with this one either uh, by the way I have to redesign the PCB boards for this one but this one is also in experiments uh, for uh, for a while now I just didn't have the time but I want to redesign this one and the 10 minutes transmitter I have some really cool ideas for the 10 minutes transmitter uh, but anyway yeah it didn't work I guess no luck uh, last year I had one single fail in the entire year uh, one th single thing that didn't work it was the CW Kier with the 5i5ic and I guess uh, this thing it's my first fail for this year and I really hope it will be the last one um, anyway it's not bad um, after all I'm still learning and uh, every fail um, helps me to learn and understand how these circuits work and how they get connected between each other a lot more so um, I guess I will just have to study a little bit more and maybe with a little bit of your help uh, I might be able to understand a lot faster <laughs> maybe um, Bill and Pete from Solder Smoke my, my friends who I know that they are passionate uh, both about building VFOs and also simple transmitters and transceivers uh, maybe they have more experience and they help me understand how this thing uh, works and why it doesn't work in my case <laughs> so yeah uh, well I guess that's it for today sorry about the fail but it happens and uh, we shouldn't be disappointed because at the end every fail it's a good thing so I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and until then, have a magical rest of the week.